Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Let Me Boy to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Vinny Andre Newland is underneath the desk with me. Well, I'm not underneath the desk, but he's underneath the desk sitting at my feet like a good little boy and this is Q&A Friday please only listen when you can safely close your eyes by the way if you're a member of Jason Newland's boring group on Facebook check out the cute picture of Vinny asleep in the bed it's so cute honestly me and him have both had a very lazy day today and then some would argue I have a lazy day every day but it's been raining outside there's hasn't been so much noise you know kids or people in the garden screaming or anything like that so there's no no one's got their windows open and blaring out music so Vinny's hasn't had those distractions so he's been very calm today which is nice I say that now because he'll probably bust start barking in a minute but it's just been a nice little break from it all if you know what I mean nice especially as I was technically up most of the night with the election E-L action um, it was the British, UK, English, Welsh, Scottish, <laughs> I don't know, whatever area uh, election it was. And we have a new government, or we will have, tomorrow. But we've got a new Prime Minister today. It's uh, Sir Sakir Starmer. So that's interesting kind of for people that live here I would say though for those listening around the world well I say for political leaders for polit any political leaders listening to this which is unlikely any political leaders from around the world listening to this have a little listen to our Prime Minister no, have a little list. Yeah, have a have a listen to, um, whatever his name was, the prime minister before. His because he lost obviously he lost his job this morning, early hours of the morning. It was so humble, so humble with his words, you know, saying he supported supported the new prime minister and all that stuff so it's like there's no no division nothing like that no trying to get people against each other no drama just the English way nice and calm and trying you know being all relaxed and chilled out in front of the camera and then get home and be angry there that's, that's, that's probably drunk four bottles of whiskey by now but there's a it's class there's a degree of class in that I don't know if I could be that classy to be honest but then you know one of the things is if you if you're being a prime minister in this country I don't know what it's like anywhere else as soon as you stop you know, as soon as you finish, whether, I mean, there was a, what's her name, Liz Truss, who was a Prime Minister for about six weeks, and retirement for XPM's UK. So let's have a look. Right, so... Liz Trust, she was only a Prime Minister for a few weeks, six weeks or something. She's eligible for £129,000 annual allowance for the rest of her life. 
or it says here up to 150 is that is that dollars oh, okay so 115,000 pounds a year for all former prime ministers um if she remains active in public life she can receive money to assist her in carrying out public duties she also gets police protection forever because she's former prime minister so she'd be a target wouldn't she i guess also apparently the lecture circuit i don't really know what that is circuit well, I guess it's a circuit where people do lectures. I can't figure that one out, but... Four prices. What support do they get there? Um, she was Prime Minister for 49 days. Theresa May... Apparently she earned... A million... Million pounds within a few months or whatever, um, a year or whatever of um, earning money on the lucrative career, the lucrative speech circuit. Wow. So she did three different addresses, so three different lectures, and she got paid a hundred grand. She got paid a hundred grand for just three talks. Blimey. And they usually write a book as well, which also gives them quite a bit of money. Apparently she earned 136,000 in September for a, for a speech in Seoul. Right. Okay. So they get to they get to uh, offers from around the world to go and talk, and they get paid huge amounts of money. So, in some ways, being an ex prime minister is more lucrative than being a current prime minister for the amount of money they can make. So yeah, it's quite amazing, really. And then what happened? Let's have a look. <laughs> It's, it's, I'm not going to get all political, but what was his name? The he was like the Facebook. He now works for Facebook UK PM. What's his name? He was like a, a semi he wasn't the actual prime minister but he was like the assistant because it was a I forget what they call it so prime minister UK prime minister 19, 2010 2010 2010 I'll just had a little swear then people slamming their doors downstairs and Vinny's barking So, yeah, um, Nick Clegg, he was the Deputy Prime Minister for five years, two, 2010 to 2015, and afterwards, uh, he got a job. Why is he not saying what he does now? That's interesting. He works for Facebook anyway. I wonder how much he gets paid for Facebook. Why are they not mentioning it on his... Um... Oh, that's weird. Not mentioning it on his uh, thingy. So Nick Click, I'm just, I'm just interested. Don't know why. Nick Click Salary. So I'm wondering what um, Facebook, I wonder what they pay him. It's quite a, it's one of the biggest companies in the world, isn't it? Facebook. Yeah. Why is the internet going so slow? Anyone? Anyone got any idea? I'd like to know. I really would like to know. 
I wonder if anyone's tapped into my... Oh, it might be the weather, mightn't it? Because I've got... My internet is... Uh, what's it called? Like digital, mobile, whatever. So if the weather's really bad, I guess that can affect the... The connection. Perhaps. Right. Oh, I've been working on my website... It's just a slog. I'm still doing it, but um, blimey, Nick Clegg will now now paid up to fifteen million a year. No way. Fifteen million a year. Wow. Is that his salary is two point seven million? So, and he gets a bonus. So basically probably wouldn't have got that job had he not been had his position in a UK government which makes you wonder what did he do what did he do while he was in government to then warrant getting a job with Facebook <laughs> I wonder it is interesting so the politicians they'll, they leave their jobs as a politician and they go and they get a job in a like an executive position for an oil company a company that's clearly benefited from them in some way while they were in office and they get a, an executive position where they're getting paid a lot of money but they don't actually do anything it's, it's uh, you'd think they'd look into it wouldn't you hmm so here we go. I've got some questions. Q and A Friday. Let's get on with it, eh? Let's get on with it. Don't actually necessarily remember all of the questions that I got. I didn't write them down. I've got them. I should have them in front of me, but they might be spread out a little bit. I've not been quite as organised as this year <laughs> this year this week how many have I, how many have I got let's have a look so I was quite surprised because I organized my Q a Fridays into a playlist or in a, po a podcast a separate podcast which is on my website so it's just under Q a Friday on jasonnewland.com and there are 13 weeks. This is the 14th week. It's ridiculous. I can't believe it's... Do you remember a couple of weeks? It's only a couple of weeks ago I was saying, whoa, we've done four weeks. Well, now this is the 14th week. And it don't make sense to me. It don't. So just have a quick look all the way down. It's going down. Q and A Friday. Q and A Friday. Two. One. 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 Anyway, so here we go. So the very first Q&A Friday was on um, be, 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 about the 10th of April, May, June, July, I suppose, yeah, it's three months, isn't it, nearly? It's the 5th of July right now. So just looking through the... Nope, can't see anything there. I did save the ones that... Because there's a contact form on my website. So I got three things sent. In fact, one of them was me, so that's not really relevant. Because you won't want to... <laughs> you won't want to hear what I posted. It was just me being messing around just to check if it worked. I'm going to make it a bit more user-friendly, I think. So, Lynn is the first question I've got. 
so here we go Lynn thank you for your question what motivates you to do the sleep podcasts how do you get back to sleep if you wake up in the middle of the night right so it's two questions what motivates me to do the sleep podcasts it's I think it, I just because I've got I guess a probably the but not my the, not the most exciting voice when i talk i can be animated at times but you know just generally my regular <laughs> my regular voice is perhaps maybe it's a little bit monotone i don't know a little bit boring soft i like to think it's just gentle quite soft is i tell you what it really the real answer to that is that's what people asked for I didn't start off, I mean, I did, I did start off doing a sleep recording back in 2006. I did a relaxation, a sleep recording and a chronic pain recording. And I think I might have done videos and I put them onto MySpace. So it was, I tried to, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't like to be honest, but I was hoping that it was the chronic pain stuff would be what most people would like. That's what I was hoping. That's what I really wanted to specialize in. It didn't work out that way, but that was the thing that I was personally interested in. And the more pain relief recordings I did, the more people were asking for sleep ones can you do another sleep one i love the sleep ones can you do more sleep ones so the sleep podcasts have always been the more popular than anything else that i've done pretty much the whole time the whole over 18 years of doing this the sleep stuff has been the most the, the most uh listened to I don't want to say popular, but the most listened to and all the most asked or requested back then. And because I kind of came to I came to the conclusion like 2006 relaxation reduces chronic pain. That was I used to have that tagline on my website back then. And that's what I realized when I was seeing people in person that sometimes it didn't really necessarily require me to focus on any kind of um, exercise, you know, visual exercise or uh, even suggesting that their, that part of their body that was problematic would you know almost laugh like that part of the body be like ice melting in the sun as an example you know so they'd feel uh more relief it it kind of dawned on me that the more relaxed people became the the less physical discomfort they would feel and then I also started to realize that let's say for example for myself I got lower back my left side of my back I've got arthritis and sometimes focusing just on the left side on that part of my back straight away to sort of try and relax it I, I can do it but it, it's sometimes a bit easier to let it happen organically to hell it just naturally so with a, a general relaxation 
you know, starting forehead, eyes, like a body scan, relaxation, full body relaxation. And, and it's almost like the different parts of your body take what it needs. So, for example, if someone's got like a shoulder, iffy shoulder, I've had, I used to have a lot of problems with my right shoulder. It's to do a little bit, but it was very, I injured it quite badly um, many, many years ago. And I say badly, I just basically hit it on a shelf. So it wasn't anything, um, anything dramatic or exciting. I'm not going to be writing a book about it or a poem, but. I remember the exact conversation I was having. It was in 19... Probably... To be fair, it might be 94. Not 94, 2004. I think it was probably beginning of 2000... No, it was beginning of 2005. What am I talking about? 2005. Probably about... I don't know, May, it was in the summertime and we were just talking because I'd had a bit of a, a difficult conversation with a number, another member of the community because I was living in a Buddhist community. So I'm talking to this one of the people that lived there and he kind of gave me a different perspective like, okay, I was saying all this stuff, and he said, why don't you shut up? I said, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. And I stood up. Because I didn't really know my bearings, I wasn't used to all the layout of the house. I And I've had a few accidents over the years, unfortunately. I stood up, and I banged my shoulder on this shelf, it was just a random shelf, why was it even there, but it had a corner, like a, it wasn't sharp enough to open an envelope, but it was definitely, you know, it was sharp, it was like edged, if that makes sense, and it went right in my shoulder, and um, it caused me a lot of problems for quite a few years actually. I ended up having two steroid injections and I was on pain medication and they said I needed an operation and because the, the gristle had grown, whatever the nerve endings were rubbing on each other and stuff. So anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about my shoulder. It has to be about, always comes back to me, doesn't it? Ah, oh, I should change this to let me bore you with my narcissism to sleep, maybe. Da, 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 da. So, oh, talk about narcissists. What is the month now? It's July, August. By next month, well, next month, I think the 16th, they told me, I should know if it's all, it's a, I've got the green light to start my degree course in psychology which starts in October I'll know next month because that's when the finances have been accepted so there's a cut off point like, I think it's either the 13th or the 16th in my memory of August and they have to have it decided by then so fingers crossed eh and I can start my degree my new, my second degree, yay! Um, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, well, I've been listening to audio books now and on psychology and I'm really getting into it. It's very interesting. I've always found it interesting, but knowing that I'm just going to assume that I'm going to be doing the degree. So knowing that, I there's like a reason to be listening to the podcast on the podcast to the audiobooks there's more what is he doing he's looking for something yes. 
What are you doing? He's always up to something, honestly. Always up to something. It's been he's been trying to catch a fly for the last few hours. He loves it. It's just it's the chase. You know what? New, what's new about him? About Vinny? There's a neighbour. That's I don't know if you saw the little video of the tent. And Vinny was in the tent. That's a neighbour, and that was um, someone I've known since I moved in here. And my friend downstairs, he was best friends with the one of the family members. So I. What's the point? Oh yeah, he was around there a couple of weeks ago. And he went for the cat. He didn't go for it, but he chased the cat. The cat told him off. Now I don't quite know what happened. I heard it, didn't see it. He wasn't injured or anything like that, but he was scared. Like absolutely shaking. So he got told off. And now he will walk a cat can be sitting on the pavement and he will walk past it inches away and he will just ignore it. Ever since then, it was two weeks ago, doesn't go after cats anymore. Doesn't bother with them. Isn't that weird? It's like he's learned straight away to... Um, he already knew like cats that stand their ground and there's two that he's met that don't run from him one's in the garden and it's known for being a hunter and it, that cat ain't scared of nothing it's a black cat and it just I you know, think he was barking and this cat just la literally was laughing at him and he didn't know what to do about that and then I think um, was it last week or the week before it was a cat and again he didn't do anything so I think he's yeah this was last week so he was didn't do anything at all Vinny but this cat was like purring had no fear of Vinny not scared at all about the dog about any probably any dog I imagine this one it's a different cat laying on its back and I was um, like cuddling it a bit you know what I mean like stroking his tummy and he was like biting my finger like gently and all that stuff and Vinny, Vinny got a little bit too close and the cat hissed at him Vinny all he was doing was just watching just wondering, what's going on so Vinny maybe he's realised because he's not actually much bigger than a cat I mean in reality if it came to it the cat would come off much worse because he is quite a his breed is quite a vicious breed. The old uh, Jack Russells, uh, they were bred for hunting. Back in the day. Back in the old day. So, but he's very gentle. He snaps, he snaps at me, growls at me sometimes. But he's very gentle with everybody, generally. So he's, he's, I like, that's what, one of the things I like about him. Not so impressed with his farts because they are really smelly. Like, really. And now he's just eating. Guaranteed, he'll lay down, aim his bum at me, and he'll just let a couple off. And I, oh. I think it's just like his hobby. I think. So, what my. Okay, so I went a little bit off key there, didn't I? A little bit off, off target. What motivates you to do the sleep podcasts? Well, that's it really. I, I went from there and then I thought, well, relaxation equals chronic pain relief. And then a few years later, I realized that a sleep recording and a relaxation recording, 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 it's no difference it, because it's relaxation deep relaxation will generally if if a person is ready to fall asleep 
yet there's something stopping them, maybe the mind's racing or whatever it might be. Once that person is physically relaxed, a relaxed body calms down the mind. A mind that's calming down relaxes the body. You know, it's just a, it just happens. Not nothing special that I do. Just that's just how it works. It would be quite difficult, I imagine, to feel completely relaxed in your limbs and in your muscles, and have a have anything but a a slowed down mind. In the same way. It's how could you feel relaxed and have a, a mind going a thousand miles an hour and feel relaxed physically? I mean, it's possible, I guess, if it's a, a very positive situation. Potentially, I guess. But generally, in my experience, I find that I mean, I could argue that there's not a lot going on in my mind anyway. It's not always the case. But I did notice when I started to learn to do meditation, and they said, now what we've got to do is kind of slow down the thoughts. It's not all going to stop. You know, obviously, you can't just stop all your thinking and quiet in your mind instantly sometimes it takes years and I'm sitting there thinking yeah, I've done it other than this thing that I'm thinking now I ain't nothing going on <laughs> so maybe there never was much going on in my mind not all the time though so I do have unless it's hidden so, you know, as far as unconscious stuff, eh, well, maybe. But consciously, I'm just sitting here right now, looking at the wall. I can feel my feet on the floor, you know? I could feel my arms on the desk top. My hands are holding the laptop screen the sides of the laptop screen not quite sure why i can hear vinnie chomping away on his bone i can hear the rain outside i can hear a plane in the sky in a distance i'm feeling like i perhaps could eat something soon I'm not really thinking about anything, which is weird, considering I'm able to kind of hold a conversation. I'm not really, I'm not putting any effort into what I'm about to say next. No, <laughs> I'm not trying. It's not really, and there's not a lot going on. So that's kind of. And I know, I guess I'm repeating myself. Um, I probably said this before. But one of the reasons why I continue to do these recordings is, whether it's this or whether it's some of the other stuff I do, is uh, it's nice to have variety, I think. And we've, we've, you know, if you find a particular recording that really hits the spot for what you need it for, it does what it does the job for whatever. It's, you, um, whatever you need to fall asleep, and it's just like every time you listen to me talking in that particular recording, you you drift off then maybe you, you don't need variety maybe that's the one 
to listen to. But then sometimes, sometimes it is nice to listen to something a bit different. Um, I actually had, this brings me to something, I'll, I'll come to that later, but it's something that someone wrote as part of one of the questions as well. So that's what motivates me to do this sleep podcast. I feel motivated when people let me know how I'm helping because I don't get a huge amount of feedback. I don't really ask for feedback very often. Um, this is one of those things. I think YouTube's more feedbacky, feedbacky. Like p- people are more inclined because it's easier to leave a comment on face on YouTube. And you know, I get the occasional nice comment sometimes, but never, never usually horrible. But get, uh, I mean, these days, I mean, but. I had someone, what did they put? Let me have a look. I had a comment. I'm going to read it to you. What did it, what did they say? Uh, okay. This is for, this is Lisa Col, Colbreath 5368 on YouTube. And it was for a, one of the Deep Sleep Whisper recordings, number two, no, 100, two, 210, okay, Um, three days ago, it's a bit repetitive, dash, 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 jumbled, dash, 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 jumps one topic to another, full stop, I wish it was a detailed full body massage, whisperer, video your voice is great for that so even though it's not necessarily fully complimentary at the beginning still ends with a nice you know got a nice voice so thank you Uh, and then someone else uh that's strange so the same person added wonderful whispering voice very underrated this is the same person so thank you and wonder which one they posted first i don't know unless the the person listened to my let me boy to sleep because usually the deep sleep whisper ones are fairly, eh, fairly to the point. I think. I think so. A friendly Toad commented, "This is on a different video. You put years of work into these videos. Glad you got them all back on YouTube, because we appreciate your work." Well, thank you, but they're not all back yet. Blimey. There's. A lot left still to put on, which is blind. It's really weird. I've I've lost three subscribers in the last couple of days. Ever since I posted that video of me on the screen doing a "Let Me Boy to Sleep," maybe maybe I need to not post that. <laughs> oh dear. I think it might be because people just are shocked that I'm so sexy they see me in person it's like wow we just we thought you'd be older you just look so young you've got such an old voice so croaky but now you obviously you're clearly just a young lad wow it's something that I've never heard although I used to be young I did I used to look too young Now I don't. So what motivates you to do the sleep podcast? That's kind of it, really. I thought I've covered that. I think. Thank you for the question, Lynn. Um, And also, how do you get back to sleep if you wake up in the middle of the night? I empty my bladder. 
That does the trick. <laughs> it does the trick, seriously. All I have to do is go to the toilet because that's the only time I generally wake up. Unless the Vinster down up down there, Vinny, it wakes me up. They say I was not a nickname for my thing, the Vinster. So if that's usually the only time I generally wake up. If it's um, the middle of the night is to go to a toilet. And I mean it's kind of my own fault because I do drink I drink water before I go to bed. And I, when I do get up in the night, I go to the toilet and then I drink more water. I drink more water because I've not learned. And what I do is I lay down on the, my the left side facing the wall. And I go back to bed and I go, I go back to sleep pretty much. That's it. So there's not really a lot involved in it, to be honest with you. Um, I think I'm quite... Because I don't usually have to have like a deadline of needing to be up at a specific time. I don't have that pressure, I suppose, like I used to. Because there was, there was a time when I had problems sleeping when I was younger. And what made it worse was I kept looking at the clock. Now, I don't have a clock anymore by my bed shining in my eyes like I used to you know the uh, digital clocks with a radio as well like don't it's like well, every time you look you got this big zero two forty nine in red glaring at you like oh and what I notice is back then It used to just be harder to get to sleep. I felt I found it harder the more I would the more I'd work out how long I had left to sleep. There's only five hours now. There's only three hours now. There's only two, like I when I got to the two hours I was fast asleep. And then I wake up, the alarm would wake me up and I'd let it go for five minutes. And I would literally fall back. I'd fall asleep instantly. Whenever I, I knew I had, to, I put it on. Was it sleep for five, for ten minutes or five minutes? I would fall instantly to sleep, and I'd get woken up again with do 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 or whatever it was, or the radio playing. There was a time where what I had, I had to do is move. First of all, turn off the radio because the radio wasn't waking me up. It wasn't getting me up. It wasn't annoying me. The alarm annoyed me because I had to move to turn it off. With the radio, I could just stay laying there and listen to it. So what I did is I eventually put the clock the other side of the room with the alarm on and I had to get out of bed in order to turn it off and that's the only way I could force myself to do it I was never a morning person but now yeah I'm definitely I've kind of I wake up between 4 and 5 o'clock generally these days and yeah I'm definitely a morning person now I quite like the morning it's very quiet and it might sound maybe it sounds bad but I have a little bit of time without him as well he's in bed it's just nice to have a little bit of just me me time on my own and he does come in and he cuddles up to me and stuff if he if he wakes up but it's sometimes nice to just be able to do some stuff on the internet maybe and not have him hassling me and like go go out now but it's raining you won't want to go out but I want to go out now so I take him downstairs it's raining you won't want to go out there I want to go out now 
So we go out, open the door. Don't want to go out there. You're going out. I've just put my coat on, my shoes. I've got bags ready for your poo. I've got treats in my pocket. I've got my umbrella. Um, I put my special wig on. So we are going out. Don't want to. You're coming. Nope. Yes, you are. I don't have to. Yes, you do. I don't. And I end up like having a tug of war with him. It's like, well, you need to go out to do a wee wee. He said, it doesn't matter. It does. I'm sure he's got a private place that he does a wee. Somewhere that I don't know about. You'd think I'd smell it, wouldn't you? But he, I'm pretty sure. Because there are times when he won't go outside. Like, he must be doing it somewhere. Unless he's figured out how to use a toilet. Yeah. So if I wake wake up in the morning in the in the, oh yeah, so if I, I basically just go back to sleep, I lay back down, go to the toilet, then I lay back down after having another drink of water out of my bottle, and then I drink out of a bottle because I'm a baby, and I just lay down on my left side and go to sleep, and because I'm not needing to go to sleep and I don't care if I fall asleep I just will fall asleep I can literally literally I can even come into the living room and maybe I'd set my laptop to upload some stuff so I've got let's say I'm uploading some recordings to the podcast let's say 20 recordings or whatever and it, or I've done transferring some videos to a, a different hard drive to be saved because I'm trying to start backing my stuff up now I've lost too much stuff in the past which takes a few hours to do because of the, the, the size of the of the uh, videos so if I've got like 50 videos and they're all two three gigabytes each anyway I'll come in and I'll do some stuff on the on there so I might spend five minutes in here and then go back into the bedroom and just fall asleep pretty much instantly. So yeah, I did, I quite find it quite easy to get back to sleep. Depending, it does depend. It's not always the same. There are times when if there's a lot of activity, you know, Let's say an ambulance has been called and I'm kind of concerned about one of the neighbours or something like that. Then I don't necessarily go back to bed. Or if I wake up early and there's boxing on and I know that it's on and I could watch it. I was like, oh, I might as well watch it. I've woken up at two. Boxes start at half one. Yeah, hell, might as well just watch it and then... Then I go to bed at maybe five. So it depends. But generally, um, yeah, I can wake up and just go back to sleep fairly easily, which is good. Yeah. So thank you for that, Lynn. That was a, I hope that answered your question. Uh, and I've got Jove. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. Is it Hove or is it Jove? So this is the next question. What is the best and worst song in your opinion? Wow. The worst, best and worst song. Um I've got a few best songs. There's some songs I think are really hard to beat. But because I really do, I do love some music. I love, I love my music. But I am a little bit stuck in the past. Uh, there was a time when, it was quite a few years ago now before I moved here. And there used to be, is it VH? F 
a VH1 video channel and it yeah, admittedly they'd play a lot of the same videos but it was up-to-date music so I got to I got to sort of know what was in the charts and you know became a bit more not relevant but it was quite nice to to listen to that stuff and the videos were good and you know so I quite got into that for a while and I'd listen to that while I was working on online stuff But now, I mean, there was a time when MTV, Music TV, Music TV, the place where videos really became popular. Thriller, for example, and all these really famous music videos that became famous because of MTV. And... Uh, What does MTV have now? Do, 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 do. So. so they don't play music videos anymore. Which is what was so good. That's what that what MTV was so good for, and now I've just typed it in, and I was surprised because I managed to get MTV on. I think it was Freeview or something like that. They started apparently according to this, to get an edge on competition, MTV started replacing music videos with reality TV shows. They became a reality TV channel that happened to have music videos. Well, maybe they do still play music videos every now and then. But then it's, uh, this is article here from grunge.com. They said MTV actually never really made a lot of money from playing music videos 24-7. Even during the best times. I just... They should just change your name because it's not music television if it and if there's no music. I mean, it just that's what was so good about MTV for me. It's what it was known for. They don't make any money. They've got adverts, haven't they? And it's like one of the most. Didn't MTV? Didn't it used to have? Um, comedy stuff on there as well did Saturday Night Live did that used to be on MTV maybe I'm wrong I mean that was in America so I don't know but I just have a vague memory of seeing it on TV not TV here but seeing it talked about you know VH1 is VH1 gone I don't know any um, channels that play music videos. I found it really weird, to be honest. Really? When you think, how popular would... Okay, it's probably not a good example, but I'm just thinking of some of the videos... For example, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Would would that album, would Thriller have been as successful and then gone on at the time to be the most, um, the world's biggest album at the time? The biggest, sold the most, anyone's ever sold. I don't think it is anymore. Um, world's most sold albums. I don't know how they even do it anymore, to be honest, because of all the digital stuff. But apparently, 
Thriller is still... Oh, Thriller is still the top one for the amount. 70, reported sales, 70 million. But total certified copies, 51.2 million. But apparently reported sales, 70 million. ACDC, Back to Black, Back in Black, number two. Whitney Houston, The Bodyguard, number three. Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon, number four. Bad, number five, Michael Jackson. Eagles, Greatest Hits. Then Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell. The Eagles, Hotel California. Wow. Were they quite big then, the Eagles in America? I guess they must have been. Shania Twain. Shania Twain. 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 Um, Come on over, 1997. Fleetwood Mac, Rumours, 1977. Bee Gees, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> wow. I mean, that was a great album, so hey. I'm not laughing at the album, just I don't know why I'm laughing. 30 to 39, bad 1987. Oh, this is... Oh, blind, I don't know. So, yeah, it's just... I thought... Isn't it interesting how the Beatles... None of the Beatles albums are in the top 10. Uh, even here... Abbey Road was apparently sold 30 million, but officially 16.9 million. But, oh no, 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 no. The Beatles, number one, so that was their album of number one hits, 23.2 million. Eagles, oh uh, yeah. That's just greatest hits. Anyway, I don't know why I'm looking at that. Why was I looking at that? It must have been a reason. Why? Anyone? What is the best and worst song? That's why. The best and worst song. I would say probably... It's one of those... Um, there's a thing in this country. I think it's Radio 2 or Radio 4 where they do an island discs island discs or something where they get celebrities on the radio and they say what what song or what two songs would you take to um a desert island you know with you what stuff would you take with you and what 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 album would you take and stuff like that so I can give you my favourite albums, so rather than songs, well, okay, give you my favourite songs, it's too hard. Uh, so like Africa from Toto, I love that song. Toto Eclipse of the Heart, love that song. Do you come from a land down under, where women go in the thunder? So that, I love that one. Um... So many, there's so many. I, I don't have a, a one song that I absolutely love more than any of the others, I don't think. And I do have a film that I love more than anything else. Uh, and I think when it comes to albums, I could even be, I could focus on like, oh, what, what album do I keep coming back to? What album do I keep listening to, keep coming back to after 30 odd years, 40 years or whatever? And there's a couple, couple of albums that I love. And that is um, Like a Prayer, Madonna, that album. I do like True Blue as well, to be honest. But Like a Prayer is probably my favourite one out of the two. And... Uh, 
there's two Stevie Wonder's albums, In Square Circle and oh, July. What is it? Something July. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Discography. What's it called? 1962. So these are probably being the late, like early 80s. Hotter than July 1980. So I've listened to probably most of his albums, but Hotter than July, In Square Circle. I'd probably say that In Square Circle is my favourite album of his. Hotter than July 2nd, but I'd also I did love that album. And then Characters. So I was a big Stevie Wonder fan for a while. And I still love those albums. But songs, we're talking about songs, aren't we? We're talking about songs, man. Total Eclipse of the... Uh, too many. I can't. I can't. It's very hard to just choose one. I can list quite a few, probably. And I'm not just stuck in the 80s, because I do, I like songs from all over, all over the place. But I guess it's just from a nostalgic perspective. Um, there's a song, Last Night I Dreamt Somebody Loved Me, from the Smiths. That's one of my favourite songs. Um, what other ones... Uh, oh, what is the, the Freddie Mercury Freddie Mercury song so there's one of his last songs I really liked I haven't heard it for ages I really should listen to it again I've put the wrong one haven't I not the wrong Freddie Mercury but his Freddie Mercury discography I really liked The Great Pretender, I did. And that was, what, 80, be, 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 1992, really? No, no, that's wrong. The Great Pretender, he released that song in the 80s. I remember I was around my friends listening to it. I am the great Pretender, pretending that I'm doing well. Oh, it's a posthumous. And the great pretender, he sung it in the 80s. Released 1987. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it was right. I was right. I thought it was earlier than that, to be honest. I thought it was about 85. Okay, so the songs he did, singles, one of his last singles, actually a couple of his last singles, and I think, Living On My Own. Yeah, I think Living On My Own, but I think maybe it was a Queen then. It might have been Queen. Queen, go on, let's go back, Queen. Um, uh, 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 uh. Queen. So Queen's last album. I mean, what I find is kind of weird, really, is, you know, when people go solo, and it just sounds the same as when they were with the band. It's like why why be solo? Just have just be with Queen. There was a thing though, because Barcelona, there is um in nineteen ninety 
that became the I think it was the unofficial anthem for the World Cup in 1990 because it was in Barcelona I think the the whole cup, World Cup thing but Pavarotti's song was the one do 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 whatever so but Barcelona was uh they used to play that quite a lot during that song during that song during the uh what's it Concert tour, studio albums, discography, list of songs recorded by Queen. So let's go to the end. Because it was, they did an album. Nineteen ninety five. So no, not ninety five. Come on. That's weird. Why is it jumping all over the place? Because it got out alphabetically. Why? Why would you do that? Hey. Why would you do that? I want to look from year. I can actually. I wonder if it'll let me click on year. It will. Wow. That's nice of them. So I'm clicking on year. You know you belong to me. When love breaks up, water. Who wants to live forever? Um. That's one that. Who wants to live forever? Who wants to live forever? So maybe that was him on his own. I think it looks like it probably was. Probably was him on his own, which is a little bit Freddie Mercury. So let's go. Uh, come on, come on. Discography. Who wants to live forever? Who wants to live forever? My. Oh. Compilation albums. The Great Pretender, 1992. Singles. I want singles. Singles. Maybe it wasn't a heart. It might not have been a, a chart hit. Love kills. Kind of me living on my own. I love that song. Nineteen ninety three, the great pretender living on my own. That must have been out before that though. Guide me, the golden boy, the great pretender. Time, love me like there's no tomorrow. Living on my own. So it was nineteen eighty five. Living on my own. I was born to love you. I was born to love you. Okay. Right. So when does when was that song then? Freddie he did sing Who Wants to Live Forever, didn't he? Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury. Who wants to live forever? Who wants to live forever? Official video is Queen. Recorded in 1986. Okay. So it wasn't, well, it was still a long time. It wasn't long before he he left, but... I don't know. I think songs become... Blah, it's loud, isn't it? Song, songs can become more poignant, can't they? Later on. Um, I had a big thing for Tracy Chapman back in those two albums I absolutely loved in 1988 or two songs that I absolutely loved actually um, Fast Car from Tracy Chapman and Everywhere which was Fleetwood Mac two, two of the biggest hits of that summer and two of my favourite songs. And I remember sitting there in the staff room of the co-op supermarket that I used to work. Little little co-op. And I'd sit there, one table, enough for two chairs. It wasn't a big that was a staff room. And 
I'd have my can of Coke and my packet of fig rolls biscuits. And that's what I'd have during my break time. I'd go home at lunchtime because I'd live just up the road. And I just, it used to be on the radio. It's almost like they timed it. And one of those songs would be played. It's weird. Uh, for a, well, for a few weeks, I just remember it. It's because I didn't work there long. I probably was there about three months, so it'd be more spring time, spring to summer, sort of time. Yeah, worst song. Is there a song that I really don't like? There has been songs that I didn't like. And then they grew on me. One was Drunk in Love. Was it Beyonce? And her husband. Drunk in Love or Drunk in Love. I thought that was awful. Because there's no build up to it. It was like she just released it. No one knew it was coming or whatever. So I was thought I'd listen to it. Because I do like her. It was awful. But you know what? I ended up loving it. Because it, it was just, it was so different. Just very, very different to anything. It wasn't, just, it's a great song. So yeah, that's, but at the, at the time I didn't like it. I didn't like it. What other ones have I, songs have I not liked? Is there a song that would come on that I don't want to listen to? Okay. Um, right, so if there's a sound, it's a, it's a compilation album. What songs would I skip through? I would probably skip through Stock Aiken and Waterman songs. So Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up, I wouldn't I wanna listen to that. No offence to him, I just I'll never forgive him. I just <laughs> it was it was played too much. And I I, no, I never really never really liked I liked him didn't like that song and I did like a couple of songs that he did and he did his song um, was it Hold Me In Your Arms that one and then he did he sung a live song which was a I think it might have been maybe it was Hold, Hold Me In Your Arms do, 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 do. but he had a really good voice but I didn't like the style of songs and he did uh, I think he did a, a Christmas song that was really good uh, or uh, when I fall in love uh, he released it at Christmas I think but I know it's not a Christmas song uh, so I really liked his voice I just didn't like some of the well that particular song Never Gonna Give You Up it just didn't didn't like it nothing wrong with it I just didn't it was it was too needy it was it demanded <laughs> demanded my attention and I didn't like it um, and just things like Sinita and Carly Minogue and Jason Donovan and again nothing against any of those people I just never really enjoyed their songs a couple of Jason Donovan songs were quite good, actually, but a um, couple of uh, Carly Minogue songs I quite liked. Maybe later on, when she was a bit older, you know, in the pretty late 90s, rather than middle 80s or late 80s. But, so yeah, that, that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of... Um, you may not know this if you're living in America you might not know this but there's some album or some songs like if you have a co compilation album let's say on Apple Music which is what I'm using at the moment I've got two months for free yay they they'll put a song in that I've never heard of and I look it up and it was a huge hit in America never heard of it here well I've never heard of it so, and something from like 20 years ago, even 30 years ago. Now, I was very up, 
up on my music back then. You know, I knew, I watched Top of the Pops every week for, well, from a kid all the way up to when they stopped putting it on TV. I used to listen to the Top 40 charts up to probably 10 years ago, every Sunday. So I'd listen to the Top 40. So I was up to date on what the songs and what was going on, you know, with music generally. Not phonetically, but I knew roughly what was in the charts and who was doing what. And I used to watch, I said I used to watch the VH1 and stuff like that as well. And on YouTube also, we used to have music videos, so I used to watch music videos on there. Which I might start to do a bit more actually. So, mm, worst song. So yeah, they're, they're the kind of songs I don't really like. I'm not a big fan of country music. I'm not, not against it. I'm not against anything. Um, I'm against this chair, my buttocks, because they're stuck. But I noticed that as I got put on weight, I noticed when I sit down sometimes, I hear like a sucking sound and I realize I'm stuck to the chair. Anyway, I'm a little bit like those. You remember the those octopuses you used to be able to chuck against the wall, and they just either stick or they'd like start to crawl down the wall because the suckers would keep it on, and that's what I'm like. It's my bum, my bum's like that. So an octopus just a bum. So I country music. Never really, the only person I ever really liked country-wise was Dolly Parton. Because I did like her songs. I like, I just love it, really liked her sound. Like, you know, because she was a huge, huge, huge tit, huge hit um, in, in the UK. Because she had the 9 to 5 movie, didn't she? And then the... The one with Burt Reynolds, the something house, forget what it's called. But um, I just took to her, because I, I was a kid and I used to love, love her songs, like 9 to 5. And what's the other one? Um, I've listened to her greatest hits a few times. Jolene, Jolene, that's it. Jolene. Jolene, 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 I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. I mean, come on. It, I always found that to be the most unrealistic song I've ever heard in my life. Especially then. In the like early 80s. Ain't no one going to be taking her man. Ain't, there was no one on this planet that would be able to take her man. Just... It just, I, it wasn't going to happen. It was almost like a bit of a joke song, because she she had everything going for her, apart from being hugely famous and physically and personality wise, everything. And the fact is, she did have what was his name? I forget. But she married, and they've been together forever. Been together the whole time. I mean, I think she got a pass to kind of do what she wanted. You know, whatever that is. But she, she's, he's been at home and he's been a, her rock, I guess, or whatever. Her rock. No, it's not a right word. I don't know, whatever. But she's, she's been, oh, what was his name? Is it Mervin? Marvin? So there's, I like the story. There's apparently she got into, where is it? Where is it they do the music? So we don't have stuff like that in this country. We, we're so tiny, we've got such a tiny country. We don't have like a whole area full of music or a whole area full of churches or a whole area, um, f whatever. I mean, I reckon Disney World would probably take up half this country. S really, it's, seriously, it's it's ridiculous how tiny this place is. It doesn't feel tiny when you walk in. 
But when I hear that people in America are traveling for like two hours a day to get to work, wow. I mean, two hours, you know, for a meeting, maybe once a year, if you have to do like a long journey, fair enough. But two hours every day, four hours driving. Now, if something was two hours away in this country, it would probably take about five hours to get there because of the gridlock, because of the traffic. We know what gridlock means. That's a good movie, by the way. If you've never seen it, Gridlock had um, that rapper, I forget his name, uh, the one that's quoted a lot. Tupac, that's it, he was in that. It's a good movie, Gridlock. I know he's he's more famous probably, well, for the obvious thing, but it, it was for the for his music or for a rapping or whatever he did. But that's a really good movie. So he was moving into, pretty sure he would have been a movie star. That was kind of the way he was heading. Yeah, so um, there's a particular scene in that movie. It's kind of funny. I won't tell you about it, but it's it's something that I've never seen before or since in any movie. Two things, actually. One, where... So Tupac's got his friend who's a white bloke. And they go into a... It's a place which has got, I don't know what is, is, I don't know if they're in the hood, if that's the right term, a hood, they're in the hood, and anyway, this white bloke says something that he shouldn't have said, and it was just, I forget who's in it, who's in, who's, who's the bloke in that, gridlock, gridlock. Gridlock movie, 1997, oh, there's another movie called Gridlock, and it's not the one, it's Gridlocked, nope, Gridlock, Gridlocked, how annoying, so another movie called Gridlocked came out, and it's the bloke from, oh, Prison Break, the older brother in Prison Break, so that's annoying oh gridlocked it is gridlocked as well but it's with an apostrophe d 1997 and it was around that time who's in it no no really tim roth is in it blimey I didn't know that. Tim Roth. Wow. Right, if you haven't seen it, and you're an adult, check it out. It's a good movie. And Tim Roth, to be fair, Tim Roth doesn't do rubbish stuff. He's probably one of the finest actors in the world. So... I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think he is. He's brilliant. I've never seen anything he's been in that wasn't good. So back to the music. So I think I've answered the question. Have I, have I answered the question? I think I have. So I hope I've answered that, Jove. Um, best and worst song. So I don't have a... I suppose... Yeah, Never Gonna Give You Up is probably my least favourite one of my least favourite songs. Um, never been a big fan of drum and bass. That missed me. Not age wise, it just missed me. So I was I was at the right age for drum and bass. I was at the right age age for house music. And all that stuff, but I just didn't acid house. So I was right age for that. Never, never 
appealed to me at all. The whole being around other people, big crowds of people, no. No, it just wasn't my thing. So none of that kind of music really... I mean, some of it was quite good, I guess, I quite liked. When I first listened to Terence Trent Darby's second album, I was a little bit unsure about that one, but I ended up loving it. When I listened to Michael Jackson's Invincible album, it wasn't the same as his normal stuff. But these days, I really love it. I guess it's just, you know, things change certain things I mean there's movies I remember watching The Sopranos and I thought nah what a pile of rubbish just and I ended up being probably my favourite TV show one of my favourite TV shows ever and I couldn't be bothered to watch Lost because I thought nah so he started barking and now he's distracted by the fly again. He's just he's just jumping up at the fly continuously. He's loving it. It's his favourite thing. And he never catches it. Because he can't fly, I guess. That'd be weird. Did I tell you that I keep seeing these two hawks? I don't know if they're hawks or falcon falcons. Um pedigree falcons or whatever. Or, well, probably not eagles, but wow. Big, big birds. Bird, definitely birds of prey. That's a million percent birds of prey. And I'm thinking of getting myself a telescope. Well, or some cheap binoculars or something. Or borrowing someone's. But the problem is, when I see them, I'm... Well, it's hard because I'm in a park, I'm near a school, and it might look weird. <laughs> Me holding binoculars outside a school playground, you know? I just, it's just, because that's just where the park is. No, I'm, I'm looking in the sky, and I'm absolutely besotted with these two birds. It was one bird, and another one came along. I can't, Mum don't mean to be prejudiced, but I can't tell the difference between the two of them. They're too far away. I'm guessing it's it's a little family. And I asked another neighbour and they said, yeah, they've seen them in the field. So, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's given birth to the the bird spotter in me. And I didn't realise I was a bird spotter, but I think I am. And that might be the new route that I'm taking in life. And that might be what we're going to be talking about forever and ever. Amen. That might be what this podcast turns into. Me talking about bird watching. And that scares me. <laughs> really scares me. I don't. Because I, I, I get a little, I, I've got, there is a potential of me getting a little bit obsessed with things sometimes. So I have to, I have to watch myself. Because if I get too, too excited about something, that's all I want to do. All day, every day. That's it. I was like that when I first discovered website building. I was fascinated with it. That you could literally turn a bunch of words and a bunch of um, things that you type in into moving images or into a, a web page, basically. I couldn't just like, loved it. That's all I did for, oh, excuse me, for over a year. It's not all I did. I mean, I, I did other stuff, but that's what I did most of the days of the week for a year absolutely obsessed worst song there must be a song that I really 
cannot stand. I can't think of one. I didn't like the Cliff Richard song. Um, the he did the the a prayer to a song, which I didn't like. I just didn't like it particularly. Didn't you know? The words were nice. I just didn't. It just seemed a bit too. Just a may. Uh, um. There's been a few Eurovision Song Contest songs that I've heard that I I couldn't name them, but I didn't like them. Wow, yeah, a few really the ones that I just didn't didn't quite take to. But but even if it's a song that I don't necessarily like, I can still appreciate the. You know the vocal talents, or the the dancing, or the choreography, whatever you want to call it. You know the, all the planning that went into it. Because you know, even with a movie, even like the worst a movie that's that's like classed, but everyone pretty much it watches it. Well, not everyone, but a lot. Most people seem to think it's a really bad movie, whatever it is. That was somebody's dream. That was somebody's life's work, potentially. You know, they put everything into that. Perhaps they invested every penny they had into producing that movie. And, you know, they spent years maybe writing a script and then a few more years trying to sell the script. And it's like a lot of work went into that. And the actors and... The musicians, maybe that did the music, the background music for the song, and the or maybe the extras involved, uh, especially if it's like a big movie that flops. A lot of people would have put a lot of work into that, and that's kind of how I think about it in a way. It's like okay, it didn't the movie didn't necessarily work so well. Let's say Independence Day two. Which is ironic because it wasn't Independence Day yesterday in America. Is it July the 4th or July the 5th? I don't know, but we didn't, we were busy in, in, in England or, or UK. We were busy with the election, so there was no, um, I think normally the papers would be talking about whatever whatever's going on you know independence day and stuff let's face it it's kind of independence from us isn't it in a way i suppose independence independence from the brits from the limeys is it limeys is that what we called limeys <laughs> so independence day 2 I think it was a, I think, I think, Independence Day 2. I think it was a flop, like financially. Wow, is it that long ago? So Independence Day Resurgence. Nope, I'm absolutely wrong. I take that back. I apologise. I apologise especially to everyone involved it just wasn't very good I didn't find it to be very good maybe I should watch it again but um, development what did the filming marketing Theatrical reception. Right. Resurgence was unable to replicate the success of its predecessor. It was not one of the top grossing films of 2016, not even of its month of release, due to Finding Dory, which was a, a much bigger movie. The film also failed to garner much support from China. 
the world's second biggest movie market as the cinema cinematographers cinema cinema goers they complained about how little screen time there was for Chinese actress Angela Baby okay well it clearly made a profit because it's they spent let's have a look they spent 165 million budget and 389.7 million box office now profit out of that I don't know but it was just I thought it was uh, a bit of a turkey and maybe it's because I'm a Londoner maybe it's because I thought I don't know maybe it's because I thought that it was going to be good and I'm going to have to revisit it maybe it was a good movie and I just didn't enjoy it maybe I was in a mood I might be in a mood sometimes I get into moods maybe that's what it was maybe it was actually a brilliant movie worst movies of all time of all time okay so uh, wow Jaws the Revenge how dare you 1987 I went to watch that that was Jaws 3 wasn't it Jaws 3 3D it's ridiculous I mean Jaws was actually searching for them searching I mean that was a weird one okay fair enough one of the movies that I thought I remember was it the water world it got such a kick in when it was released um, biggest movie flops so water world was one of those movies at the time but for some reason maybe it isn't anymore 16 box office flops because they spent at the time it was like the biggest budget ever but it's not even listed here not even listed Heaven's Gate John Carter Stealth Sahara 13th Warrior The Lone Ranger I remember sitting through The Lone, the Lone Ranger I don't want to discuss it so Johnny Depp was Tonto the biggest box office bomb okay I thought Waterworld was Black Adam apparently they that was wow wow so Waterworld W The Postman see The Postman was a good movie I don't care what you say. So Waterworld isn't even on there. So that makes me wonder. What am I talking about? R.I.P.D. That's a good movie. Yeah. It was classed as a flop. Rise of the Gut. No. They got stuff on it that was good. How dare they so yeah I remember the water world and it was it was panned at the time it was panned and by the press maybe it didn't do very well in this country maybe that's why I don't know but I liked it water world right 
Okay, 172 million budget, box office 264. See, that's not my memory of it. My memory that it was a huge flop at the time. But, uh, that does make me wonder. Makes me wonder. It's almost like Wikipedia is changing the reality. Critical response. The cost controversy. See, there was a big cost controversy. There was. Huge. And they kept going on about it. Long before it was even released. How could they spend so much money on a movie? But the fact is, it was a 1995 film. Who is the biggest actor in the world? The biggest male actor? I think it's fair to say Kevin Costner. You know, at that time. Dances with Wolves. Um... <laughs> Before this movie, just leave now. I know the movies. I'm looking it up, but Dances with Wolves, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, The Bodyguard, and then he he does this one. So he was a huge, huge star at that time. So I think it's fair to say. Kevin Costner The Untouchables as well but that was like early on wasn't it but 90 but in the early 90s he was did he do the what's the one where if you build it they will come what's that movie Field of Dreams. I mean, that's one of those movies that's going to be in... That will go down. That just be... It will just be kind of remembered, won't it? It's one of those great movies that... You don't particularly want to watch, but... You, <laughs> you don't want to watch it again, but you remember it. So I feel sorry, right? I don't feel sorry, but... I feel a little bit sorry for the makers of movies that ruin the movie for people. They're great movies, great, great movies, but they ruin it. So there's no point watching it again. Like, never. Okay, there's, there is just to kind of figure out how they managed to do it, you know. But one would be The Sixth Sense. Uh, which is, what's his name? Bruce Willis. The other one is Nicole Kidman. Uh, I forget the one. But it's in a big house with her two children. Again, I don't want to spoil the movie for people who haven't watched it. Because they are great, great movies. To me. The Sixth Sense. Brilliant. But once you know, once you've seen it once, there's the, you can't, you're never going to enjoy watching it again, I don't think. Because you know... I guess it's like watching a um, like a Sherlock Holmes or an Agatha Christie movie. Once you know who done it... You know? Although, of course... Uh, Columbo turned that on its head, didn't they? Because they used to used to get to see who done it right at the beginning very clever i like that i remember thinking that's very clever i like that so water world the postman is a kind of similar kind of movie in a sense i wonder what his biggest movie was out of all of those dread a bodyguard Dread of Bodyguards, the biggest movie that he was in? No, 411, well, yeah, blimey. 25 million budget, 411 million at the box office. 
but I reckon do you reckon uh, 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 maybe 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 baby I have you what's the one we were just talking about that he was in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves but it rose to prominence Dancing with Wolves was why they not put that in he rose to prominence starring in such films as The Untouchables, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, JFK, Robin Hood. Dances with Wolves? He won an Oscar for. Blimey. Wow, he looks so young there. We all did, I guess, didn't we? 1990. Budget, 22 million, 424 million box office. I mean, that's a profit, isn't it? I wonder if he took... I reckon he probably had shares, got a percentage. Maybe not, though, because he wasn't famous at that time, was he, really? Hmm. Maybe. Anyway. So that I can't think of anything else of regarding my f worst song. But my best song, my favourite song... It's a Michael Jackson song I really love, which is in our in our small way. It was basically just I, I think I talked about it the other day. Just basically brrr, saying that we can do us we can help someone. Maybe not be able to help the world, but you can help. You can do something, help someone in some small way. Today, you know, so quite like that. So, Jove, I hope I answered your question, kind of. <sighs> right, who's next? Reactor to... So, I'm going to just check, because I'm not sure if I've got any questions that were posted earlier in the week, which could have happened. So, I'm just going to see... Yes, right. I posted five days ago. This was just uh, talking about the yeah the Q and A Friday post, the Q and A podcast. So I had a couple, a couple of questions on there. So I'm going to answer these. William answered, asked, okay, and Teresa, great, great idea for the Q and A podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, right, so we've got a few questions. So, have you considered moving to a different country in the future? I thought about maybe going to Thailand, but I think it's a little bit too hot for me. And um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you know, without, I don't know how long I've got left. I don't know what, what kind of, what the plan is for me. I don't know. It's not, it's not really, this is William, um, it's not really something that I'm able to plan right now. I mean, I could plan it, I suppose, without being a kind of a fantasy way, I suppose, but... Um, I really don't know, I'd quite... Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think I quite like the idea of maybe spending part of my year in one place. So maybe be living here, having the, my base being here. But then traveling, perhaps spending some time, maybe spending a month in Thailand once a year in the, the, the cooler period maybe like January time and then maybe or December and then maybe sort of splitting up so maybe you know being here for a couple of months and then going away for a month then coming back for a couple of months and or be you know something like that uh, if the finances allowed that I think it would be quite cool it'd also give me something to talk about 
give me something to to fill my podcasts with and uh, help the creative juices to flow. So yeah, I think that'd be good. To I quite like to also go on some cruises. That appeals to me to be able to travel around. Do not necessarily a world cruise, although that is something that I I would like to do one day. But to just to visit lots of different places, but not necessarily stay anywhere for any length of time. And I feel comfortable with Thailand because I've been there, and I kind of know my way around a little bit part of part of Thailand. So I'd feel comfortable doing that, going there for a month. That would be easy. Um, and it's also quite cheap as well, so it's not an expensive holiday. Take off the air fl- airfare. Once you get there, it's, it's not a lot of money, if you're careful, if you don't get ripped off. Like I did. Me, 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 me. So... I quite like the idea. There's very few places I wouldn't want to go. There's I don't want to go anywhere where there's um, just like a huge a lot of poverty and things like that. Because just I don't think it. I mean I know it's not necessary. By that I don't mean. Of course, it's not supposed to be fun being around people with in poverty, but I don't want to go somewhere it's really nice. But then you turn a corner and it's really horrible. Because I can get that here. I can go to London. So, you know, I don't really want to go to um, a place where the tour is touristy. And everything's nice and bright and furry and fluffy. And then, you know, turn a corner and you're, you're in a different, like a different planet. I don't, that's, that doesn't appeal to me really. And I realised that I might be talking about nearly every city, possibly every city in the world, maybe, where you know it's, there's a big contrast between the haves and the do-not-haves, like you know, big contrast, but very little physical distance. But I don't think I'd fancy going somewhere where. Probably not now. When I was younger, I would have liked to have gone. I always fancied myself of being a bit of a little bit of a Mother Teresa, to be honest. Just without the skill. Because I'd obviously I'm not a, I'm not a nurse. I don't know what it'd be like to. I'm not a mother either. But the idea of devoting my life to helping people, like she did, um. I mean, that's just, you know, like, is it Calcutta, wasn't it? And she just, yeah, I don't know much about her life. I've heard stuff and some stuff I've heard I don't want to know about, if you know what I mean. I just like the idea that she was, and there's no such thing as perfection. That's what I think. And then I look in the mirror and I realize I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> dear that's why I feel I look at Vinny and I think that's perfection he's perfect my little Vinny so I'd like to travel around because you know I don't know who knows what's going to happen in the future and I'm now 53 coming up to 54 next month Um, I plan to stick around I want to stick around, like, stick around, stick around for as long as possible. Um, but I've got six years of doing my degree. So that's part-time for six years. So really, I don't need to be in the UK to do it, but I do need to be living in the UK to do it in order to get it financed. So I was... And I don't... I can't really... If I was to give up my home, it'd be difficult because, you know, if I went if I went away for any length of time, 
I probably I don't know what the rules would be as far as um, rent you know living here in a council flat um, and if I lost this it's even though I, I don't appreciate living here as much as perhaps I could do sometimes I really do realize how lucky I am to have my own place to have my own flat uh, and knowing what I kind of had to go through to get it and how many years it took for me not having my own place you know 27 years or 28 years of living in all kinds of different places so to give giving this up would be quite difficult you know so let's say if i if i was to try not to laugh if i was to meet someone and be in a relationship and she said oh come move in with me she said that to me come and move in with me we into her house for example or her flat or whatever it would be difficult to do that not that I perhaps wouldn't want to because I might want to I don't know but once this flat's gone and you know once you give a flat up you can't get another one for 10 years I think you have to wait 10 years before you can apply something like that I think and I'll be like 90 by then so I quite like the idea of traveling i'd like to discover a bit more of this country i'll tell you what it i think what it is is because i i traveled so much when i was a kid when i was a little kid like little i think i think i got a little bit used to it and maybe that's why i struggled to settle down i struggled to stay in one place for any length of time and this now living here in this flat this is the longest i've ever lived in any one place and i've been here over nine years now just over nine years and i've never lived anywhere for nine years ever ever i mean the longest place i lived in before was when we had the family home from the ages of nine to 15 so what's that six years so we lived there for six years that was the only place i ever lived for that long outside of that i think four years is the longest i've ever lived anywhere usually it's maybe three two sometimes one year there's been places that i've lived for a couple of weeks a few months a few days yeah it's just all over the all, all over the place over the years but maybe there's that little traveler in me that wants to move around a bit because that's what i was kind of i got used to that maybe maybe i think it would be quite good to have one of those he's hassling me because he wants a treat do you perchance wish to have a treat, my dearie? I think it's a yes, isn't it? All oh, right, so then he was begging for a treat, so I had to go and give him a treat. Now he seems a bit chilled out now, which is good. So I kind of answered that question, different countries moving... I don't know, I'd definitely love to visit America, I'd love to visit Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, there's parts of Europe I'd really love to visit as well. So, it's, it's just a case of, I mean, I've been to, as far as Europe goes, I've been to Ireland, France, Belgium... Bulgaria and um, the Netherlands. So I've been to five. Five.